Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim and today I am going to talk to you about motors and servos. One of the bi biggest questions we get from a lot of the users is where do I use one from the other? I don't know whether to use a servo, I don't know the, whether to use a motor. How do I know where to use which in, um, choice in what application? And to be quite honest, that's kind of, uh, it is a big question that really kind of boils down to how you're going to tend to use it or what the function of your robot basically is. So let me kind of cover a little bit as a start on some of the differences between the two different types of power, if you want to talk about them that way. We're going to start with uh, probably the most common uh, example of a motor, and that's a DC motor. And, and basically, a motor, what its job is, is to rotate. And they come in different sizes and different shapes, but basically the idea is that they provide continuous rotation. That's the basic function of, of a, a DC motor. Now, there are some differences that we'll go into a little bit more, but that's kind of the basics of, of a, a motor. A servo, on the other hand, is still a source of power. It's meant to rotate, but a lot of times a servo is limited in its range of motion. So, for instance, if I put a mark right here on that servo horn and I rotate that, you should be able to see that it only goes a certain distance, about a little bit, slightly more than 180 degrees. And that's the limited amount of range of motion that you get from a servo. Now, the big benefit is that this servo will know where it's at, so I can tell it to go to a definite spot in that range of motion, and it will move to that spot each and every time. So that's one of the big advantages of most servos. Now, there are other types of servos as well. We also have a continuous rotation type of servo that is more like the DC motor in the fact that it, it provides continuous rotation, and the same thing could apply for motors in the fact that there are some additions to motors called encoders that you can put on uh, a DC motor that will allow that to actually keep track of where it's at and move to a certain position instead of rotating continually. So this is where it starts to get confusing and, and people can wonder, how do I know which one to choose in which application? And this is where we start to look at maybe not only the benefits, but maybe the downsides of the specific uh, application. You can see this motor weighs a little bit, so weight becomes a consideration. On the opposite side of that, it has plenty of power. The servos, I've got light weight, but not near as much power. So you can see where I begin to look at my application and where I intend to use this power that begins to tell me what type of, which one that I should actually use. So let's take a look at an example of a couple of different uses that might help us a little bit in the decision on which one we want to use. I'm going to show you here an example of a, mo a robot that we probably would want to use a DC motor in. You can see I've got my DC motor right here. Now this is a motor where, uh, an application where I need lots of power, I need continuous rotation, I'm not as worried about position, I'm just worried about power and weight. And you can see as I, as I turn this on, let me hold it up and, and turn it on, that I've got, got my rotation and I've got plenty of power, I've got it geared down and it gives me what I need for this specific application. Uh, and let me show you an example of another where a servo might actually come more into play. This is a robot where I've got actually several different kinds of servos. I start with my basic servo that gives me position, and this is a limited range servo, so I don't need to worry about continuous rotation, but I do maybe need to worry about position, where I can close those grippers to a certain position and then open them up to another position. So this is one type of servo. And then I have a continuous rotation servo that, again, I've got a range of motion. And because I've got this all out in a position where weight becomes an issue, servos become more efficient than the standard heavy motors. So it really becomes an example or a case where you want to look at how you intend to use or need to use your uh, source of power and where it's going to be used. Well, that helps you decide whether I need a DC motor or a servo or maybe one that has an encoder on it that allows me to 
uh, track my position but still has power, or maybe a servo that uh, has continuous rotation but I don't need the weight.